Yo, what's the crack? In today's video, I'm going to discuss one of the most important reasons why so many people fail to transform their body when they decide to take a crack at this lifting thing. And here, I would refer to failure as the lack of substantial and noticeable results derived from your training especially when it comes to muscle growth. After five plus years coaching beginner clients for the most part, I have to say that not mastering this skill is quite literally killing your gains. And that skill is the ability to gauge your RPE, rate of perceived exertion. Or put it differently, the ability to estimate how many reps you leave in the tank during a set before reaching true muscular failure. So today I'd like to bring to you a real story from one of my clients. That way, many of you might be able to relate a little bit better to his personal struggle. Additionally, I'm also going to offer you a route to stick to whenever you're about to be deceived by your own senses. So stay tuned for that, like and subscribe, and let's hit it. Lately, there has been quite a renaissance of successful natural lifters sharing useful information on how to get bigger and stronger. And that's been very positive and refreshing for the whole community. However, if you're a total noob and you decide to go down the hypertrophy rabbit hole, you're likely to be overwhelmed by the myriad of unfamiliar concepts around the variables of tonnage, volume, intensity, frequency, exercise selection, etc. etc. Those things are indeed very important. I'm not gonna play it down. But if I was forced to single out the two most valuable takeaways from all the content being produced within the hypertrophy niche, I would say the first one is consistency and the second one is effort. In today's video, I'm going to examine the latter. But why is effort so important then? Because across history, we've seen thousands of cases of people who got jacked without fully understanding the convoluted language of hypertrophy. Through sheer effort and consistency, they achieved very impressive results by today's standards. So this means that not understanding or not being aware of certain information does not preclude you from getting the results that you're looking for. However, you can't say the same thing about effort. Extreme bouts of physical strain during your training sessions are a non-negotiable occurrence that has to take place on a regular basis for you to be able to succeed in this muscle building project especially if you're a natural lifter. But what is effort and how do we know if we are producing enough of it? Well, even though it could be argued that effort is somewhat subjective, the consensus on how to measure it must be applicable across the board. So in order for us to do that, we must turn effort into something we can quantify through the concept of muscular failure, which is loosely defined as the moment where the person can no longer overcome the resistance in a lift or said differently, failing to complete a rep. And even though reaching the point of failing a rep is not a prerequisite, it's not like you have to do it in every single set with every single exercise during your training, it's not like that, but muscular failure is a very useful point of reference that you should be familiar with in order for you to gauge your effort level in a set. How would you know otherwise if you're working close to your maximum physical capacity? The sad reality is that the vast majority of people in commercial gyms aren't. So even if they follow a perfectly optimized hypertrophy program, the results are likely to be subpar because they don't know how to evaluate their own effort level. As far as we know, muscle growth requires a sizable engagement of the largest and strongest muscle fibers. This type of stimulus can be triggered mainly by working a specific muscle to almost the point of local exhaustion through a variety of rep ranges, or by using very heavy loads that cause a great level of mechanical tension across large areas of the body, a method that would typically call for lower repetition ranges. And let's face it, the most common reality of the human experience as a whole is the path of least resistance. This means that people would stop at sets because they are not used to enduring discomfort. They quit because the set gets hard and they feel overwhelmed. And that's where the problem lies. You need to learn how to differentiate between what you feel and what is objectively happening during the set. Those are two completely different things. Let's focus on what needs to happen in most lifts for us to ensure that we have reached muscular failure or that, at least, we are working near it. The speed of the rep should be fairly consistent throughout the set up to the point where muscular fatigue kicks in. You'll be able to identify that moment due to a significant deceleration in the speed of that rep 
in the concentric phase. That's where most people exit the exercise. However, that's not gonna be you anymore. But despite the visible slowing down, you keep going because you are meant to arrive at your next destination, sticking point town. Now you have to grind through a specific angle where things aren't moving smoothly. And no, the fact that you are moving doesn't mean that you've reached failure. It means that you need to continue to produce force in order to regain the lost momentum. And you might have to go through this process more than once. It's not for the faint of heart, for sure. It might take what it could feel like an eternity. Your technique will break down if you're a beginner. It feels like your head is about to explode and you might have to grunt aggressively or make some sort of primal noise in the process to complete the rep. And only now, despite putting up an epic struggle and giving your absolute best, you can see defeat and collapse. You are finished only after you have endured the entirety of the brutal process I just described. The last rep being ridiculously slow, bearing no resemblance with the first rep, both in terms of duration and speed. So, having watched this clip where I demonstrated what true muscular concentric failure is supposed to look like, what do you think is going to happen when a complete beginner purchases a hypertrophy program and he is instructed to reach failure or perform a set up to a point of leaving one or two reps in reserve? Well, I can tell you already, he won't. Especially if the person has no sports background and has never done anything remotely difficult in his adult life. Now I'd like to further substantiate my point with a real-world example. I'm going to show you two clips of a client of mine who was instructed to complete a set of push-ups up to one rep in reserve on two separate days. The first video showcases what happens when you leave a regular Joe to his own device. The second one shows what happens when the same person is forced to venture into his true physical potential the following week. Hopefully this comparison makes the point that most people typically underestimate their reps in reserve because they have no point of reference. If in a scale from 1 to 10 they've only reached 5 in their entire life, to them getting to 5 is going to feel like your max effort, even though in reality 10 is the real peak performance. If this could occasionally happen to someone who's been doing resistance training for years, what do you think is going to happen to most beginners going to the gym on their own? The guy in the video is no longer a noob, by the way. He can do 20 plus push-ups, 10 plus dips, almost 10 pull-ups, etc, etc. And still, he's way, way off in terms of estimating his own effort level sometimes. So, do you really think that someone who has barely touched any weights in his whole life is going to do a better job at it? I highly doubt it. And that's why many of you will never build a significant amount of muscle mass despite going to the gym for years. Just look around at your commercial gym next time you go to. It's full of regular gym goers trapped in novice purgatory forever. So please don't be like them and develop your own system to call out your whenever it feels like being lazy. You need to stop using your feelings as a point of reference and you need to start identifying reality. You don't need to feel, you need to know. All right, I really hope you found a ton of value in today's video. If you did, check out this other video popping up on the screen right now. I think you're gonna like it. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell every time a new video goes live. Stay fit, stay strong, Help me raise an army of super saiyans all around the world. Peace.